Hello and welcome again to another edition of Air Force Basketball along with head coach Dave Pilipovich. I'm Brian German and the Falcons. Two games this past week to talk about on this show. First you go down to UNLV and then up to Fort Collins. Let's, let's talk about the game out in Vegas, coach, because mm-hmm. I don't think many people expected your team to go in there, play as well as you did, and really have a chance to win. Maybe a lot of people who saw that game thought the Falcons maybe should have won that game. You know, we played extremely well. Played really well. Didn't start well. Down 8-0, call a timeout, then we take a 9-8 lead. And then we managed the game through the first half. I think it was an eight-point deficit at halftime. Came out in the second half, eventually took the lead on a three from Kyle Green to the top of the key. Quieted their crowd for a little bit. Grew an atmosphere. I mean, they had a great crowd there. The Rebels were uh, – they're always good to play there. And it's a great environment. It's a, it's a postseason environment. And obviously playing the conference championships there, it's great for our guys to get that experience prior to going back in March. And then uh, we had an opportunity at the end of the game. Had the possession – Tie game, get a great shot from a great shooter. It just didn't fall. It was so close. Go into overtime and then get another possession at the end to, to win the game, and it just didn't fall. The kids played really well, played really well. A very, very good and deep and talented UNLV team. Right, most definitely. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that uh, Coach is talking about right now. Time Warner Cable actually uh, had it on on the air in Vegas, but a lot of people here didn't see it, so here are highlights of some of the things Coach B is talking about from that game. Talk about playing at home, it's confidence. I mean, really, just a young guy with confidence playing in their home arena. Reinhardt, baseline jumper, switch. Kate Reinhardt, and that's good news for Rebel fans. Points in their win Wednesday night against Nevada. It's kind of a heat check. Bennett, two threes early for Anthony Bennett. Great start for the running Rebels up eight to nothing. Extending too far out to give up dribble drive, but protecting those open three looks, as I mentioned. Lions, this time he drills the three. Michael Lyons out 28 made threes on the season. UNLV jumped out to an eight nothing lead, then Air Force got their first point. Earls the triple, bang. De Lavelle Earls. So there's yeah. just a lot of new guys, and they got to figure out how to play together. Yeah, it's also tough. I mean, Ken Burch, McDonald's All-American. I mean, this is a guy coming in with, with high hopes for himself and the team he's playing for. So it, it's hard to settle in your role. Earl is the three, and he knocks it down, and just like that, the Falcons are on top. And, and it comes with a team that likes to run. They like to the, wow. Now, Green, that's a tough three with a man in his face. Defense too far away from the basket in that zone. Usually you play zone when they, when they have a team that can't shoot the ball. Mosier! Flying to the rim, and that's the Mike Mosier the fans love here at the Thomas and Mac. Conference home opener for the Runner Rebels. Hawkins into the lane. Rice to John Jones hits his first shot. To John Jones, he's got Mosier, and Mosier basket and the foul. Fitzgerald the triple knocks it down. Mike Fitzgerald. Fletcher, nice drive with the left hand count it. Todd Fletcher. Mosier for 16. Yeah. Mike Mosier's got 14. He's out of the backboard. Lions lost it. Now he's going to get it again. And it's good, and it is a two point game. Kyle Green, the three for the lead. Count it. Air Force leads. Air Force playing with a lot of confidence here in a tough, tough environment. Hawkins steps into the three. And Justin Hawkins. Game tied at 58. Lions will create and get the two. Falcons back on top. Zero foul shots in the second half. Bennett gets the two. Kyle Green trying to take the charge. No call. Try. Fitzgerald can't get it to go. Burst the rebound, and we're going to overtime. Fitzgerald from 16, yes. Mike Fitzgerald. Hawkins gives it to John Jones. Back to Hawkins for three. No. Then at the rebound and the putback. All over green. They go back door and Fletcher gets the two. How about that pass? Dijon Jones. 
He's not shy late in the game. Stepping up big time. I mean, that's a Lions two for two at the free throw line. Lions one for two. John Jones has been the best offensive player in overtime. He's got the ball and an open look. Got it! Lions will drive. Put it up. No good. First the rebound and he fouled. UNLV survives. Coach, I got to be honest. I'm going to ask you an honest question. Did you feel your team would perform the way they did in Vegas? You know, I thought we would play well. Yeah. I thought we'd play well. Um, would I have thought that it's an overtime game? Probably not. Probably not. But I did have confidence in our guys, our practices leading up to that, also our preparation that day. Sure. But, you know, we had some guys sick. We had Taylor Brookhuis in the hospital right. that day getting an IV. Didn't know who was going to play, how we were going to manage it. But it's next man up. And uh, so proud. So proud of the effort we had there. Wish we could have came out with a win because I thought we deserved to get a win there. Um, but, again, you got to move on. Mm-hmm. You definitely got to move on. Let's see how the Falcons moved on. Whoa. Wednesday, you go up to Fort Collins. I'm sorry, but we got to show that we got to show the fans the highlights. Whoa. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see what happened up in Fort Collins, and then we'll come back and talk to Coach P about it here again. This is by, via the voice of the Falcons, Jim Arthur. Hornick has it, swings it left side on the angle of Smith, down low to Eichmeyer, pass it side to Iverson, and he jams it. So Earls with the basketball gives to Fitzgerald, sideline right. Down the lane, driving, underhand, layup is up and good. Fitz right to the glass, and you love to see that. De La Vera, up high to Fitzgerald, back to Earls, who stands now at the right post. Good pass inside to Fitzgerald, fakes, goes up, layup good. Nice fake by Fitzgerald. De La Vera, up high to Fitzgerald, back to Earls, who stands now at the right post. Good pass inside to Fitzgerald, fakes, goes up, layup good. Nice fake by Fitzgerald, Falcons lead 4-2. Green, Dorian Green, back to Eichmeyer, down to Iverson, in the low post. Works his way in the paint, goes up. Basket counts and a foul. Mike puts it on the floor. Looks, looks, bounce pass to Taylor Brookhuis. In from the left, layup, good. Beautiful pass from Fitz to Taylor Brookhuis. Smith with the basketball. Down to Iverson. They double right of the lane. Iverson looks for help. Goes baseline, driving in. Layup, good. He got around the double with the dribble. Into Eichmeyer. Now to Green. Dorian in the lane. Back up high to Eichmeyer. Shoots the three. Got it. Number two, Daniel Bejarana, who checked it. Out of green to Bejarana. Jumper left of the lane, up and in. Bejarana is... Jan has it, hands to green, shoots the three. Deep ball, and it's good for Kyle Green from the outside right. 61, Hornick has it above the three-point line. Entry pass in, taken by Iverson, throws down low to Hornick. Got to give it a go, it's good. Steal and takes it. Now to green, behind the back pass to Smith in the lane. Goes up, and the ball comes back out to Eichmeyer for a three, and he got it again. Boy, the are red. I think I speak for Falcon Nation when I, I, I got to ask you, yeah. what, what happened? I mean, I know it's a tough place to play. They've yes. won 22 in a row, now 23 in a row up in Fort Collins. But I, I think the world was hoping, that the Falcon Nation was yeah. hoping you'd play a little yeah. better than that. Those clips were a little different than the Las Vegas clips, weren't they? Yes, they were. Wait. Um, you know, the last couple of years when we've had a very good game against a ranked team, we've not followed that up with an... Two years ago, play UNLV at home. Overtime game, lose the game. Lose by 39 in New Mexico at home. Kind of did the same, same performance at Colorado State. We knew going into that game, um, emotionally, we were a little let down from the Vegas game. Had to go back on the road, although it's just a bus trip. I mean, drive up there, no excuses, but we just didn't play well. We started the game well. Get three layups to start the game. They call a timeout, and Coach Stacy set the tone. He went after him. They came out of timeout, punched us a little bit. We were bleeding. They were like sharks, saw blood, and just kept coming after us. And we just didn't pull. 40 to 19 on the glass, inside scores. We had some good offense. We missed some shots, but we let that carry over to the defense, made mistakes, allowed them to score, down 15 and a half, and never got closer after that. Right. Now, you know? do you, do, is this a game that you just now, you, have you thrown that away? Do you forget about this and move on? Do you think it's yes. more of an anomaly than what? You yeah, know, we came back on Thursday and uh, came back that night. Thursday in practice, we went right into the locker room. No clips, no talk about CSU. We went right to Boise State. Now, I'm still thinking about Colorado State, <laughs> but we went right to Boise State, moved ahead with our team, had a really good uh, competitive practice yesterday, spirited practice. Hopefully you have one again today as we prep to play Boise. Now, Boise comes in here on Saturday. That's a good basketball oh, wow. team. Playing. They shoot the ball really well. Oh, they just yeah. made two threes. <laughs> they shoot the ball We're down 6 nothing. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, timeout. Uh, so, 
uh, since they shoot the ball so well, yeah. what can you do to, you know, in Clune Arena to bring them out of that? Well, we, we've got to be there on the catch on their shooters. Uh, Anthony Drimich is, shoots the ball. Je- Jeff Loriaga shoots the ball extremely well. They lead the conference in three-point shooting, percentage, maids, everything. I mean, they just they – sh- Loriaga has made 10 in a game this year. He made six against Wyoming, including the game winner to buzzer to beat them. I mean, they just shoot it real well. But then if you concentrate on that, Derek Marks is their leading scorer at 27 against New Mexico. He drives the ball. He gets to the rim. I mean, they're talented. Um, and they're confident. Go to Creighton and win. Go, um, go to Wyoming and win. Uh, take New Mexico to overtime. We've had four overtime games in the league. They've had two. Win at Wyoming, lose at home in New Mexico. They're good. I mean, they're good. But we're, we're, we're excited about playing them. It's a little different prep than we had Vegas and Colorado State because you're concentrating on the inside, the size, the strength, the rebounding. Now we've got to get out to the perimeter and catch shooters and make sure they don't make as many shots. And hopefully maybe we give them twos instead of threes. Being a math major, if they make twos and not threes, you're, you're a little better, right? <laughs> is it more like Nevada where you were worried more about perimeter players? Yeah, it is. It is. Although um, they shoot the ball better in Nevada. And they do. They do shoot the ball better in Nevada. And, and they can go on a 15-0 run any time in the game. And whether they're down or up, I mean, you've got to make them guard you a little bit on the defensive end, maybe take some juice out of them for they have on the offensive end. And, again, we can't give up open shots. Excited to be back in Clune Arena. Very there. much so. Very so. much so. And we got three of the next four in Clune. You know, you got Boise, then new, then a, a non-conference game in New Orleans. Then we go to Laramie, play Wyoming, then we come back with Fresno. We've got to make a mark here in these four games. Okay. We've got to get some things done. We'll be, we'll be looking for that. But let's talk slightly because the next time we'll sit down with you will be after that New Orleans game. Okay. What do you know about the privateers? You know, not much right now, to be honest. Uh, saw them because we had a common opponent earlier in the year. They're a transitional team, um, meaning they're not in a conference this year. They're uh, gaining conference affiliation for the following year. So they've been on the road a lot. Uh, played Butler very close two weeks ago. Only lost by 12, I think, in Hinkle Fieldhouse or 13. So a team that can get on a roll, and, and they've got every game's a conference championship for them since they're not playing for a championship. So And we can't have a letdown in the middle of our conference play playing a non-conference. Asked about, was that a good scheduling game? Ask me next Thursday. Okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, we'll find that out. Okay, so the Falcons will have a game Saturday, 2 o'clock against Boise. That's a conference game. And then Wednesday against New Orleans, that at 7 o'clock. We'll see. We'll be there for hopefully you'll be out there. Clint Arena, both games. And then we'll mm-hmm. see you back here next time we meet you probably next week. And we'll talk about both those Great. games. Great. Thank right. you. Thank you, Coach. We'll see you then.